Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge. Today is an update video, so some exciting news about DocuSign and the agent's ability to now create static data form templates. Let's go ahead and walk through what that process looks like, and we are in command now. I'm going to go into a test opportunity that I have and show you how to get into DocuSign from the opportunity. Many of you already know this. Uh, but we're going to go this route. So here's the opportunity. I'm going to click on the opportunity name, go to the documents tab, and I've not connected this yet. So I want to connect it to DocuSign and it's going to open a new window, have me log in to my DocuSign account and it's already created it. I've, I'm logged in on DocuSign on another page there, but you can also to create these templates, you can bypass command for the template process and go straight to realestate.docusign.com and that will take you to the ability to log in to your Rooms account direct as well. So one way or the other, you wanna get obviously into your DocuSign account, all right? So we're now in our DocuSign Rooms account. The ability to create the form template lies underneath the My Docs tab. So I'm gonna go into My Docs and you're gonna see that there is a new tab called Form Templates. So I'm gonna click on Form Templates and it's basically going to ask me to create one. So I'm gonna start by creating a form template. You can see I was doing some testing earlier today. So I've got a couple that I've already created, but I wanna show you what that process looks like. So to create the form template, I'm gonna create, click on Create Form Template. It's gonna ask me to choose which form I want to create a template for. So I'm going to go in and find in Texas, our standard contract is called the one to four family, one to four family residential contract. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to click on use. Now you'll see first off at the very top, this is the name of your template. I would highly recommend that you um, identify this template correctly. So um, for this case, we're going to create a buyer template for the one to four family residential. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off. I'm gonna change this to buyer template. And I'm just gonna put test because I think I already have a buyer template. Um, but you wanna change the name of the template first and click on the checkbox. That way it's easy to identify this in your list. Now next, here's the one to four family residential contract for Texas none of the terms are going to stay static every single time. However, when we go down to, in Texas, it's uh, 10 pages, I believe. Last time I checked, they added a few every now and then, right? But page nine, my information as the buyer's agent is always going to be the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that information in. That way I don't have to put it in every single time I write a contract. So I'm gonna put buyers only, right? And I'm gonna fill in all of this information. So that way this is all filled out and ready to go every time I write a buyer offer. And you can do this with any form that has, you know, blanks that are the same every single time. Typically that's gonna be any information about yourself or your brokerage, your address, right? Those types of things. You can see how long this is taking me to type in and I've got this stuff memorized and yet it's still taking quite a while to get it all in, right? So uh, I can't remember the office's phone number, so I'm just going to put my own in there. Um, so now I'm also going to fill in this 3% box because you'd be amazed at how often agents forget this in Texas is how much we're asking for a commission percentage as a buyer's agent. So this is just one example. There's probably a few other boxes I could probably fill in that's pretty much always the same for my template, but I'm just gonna show you just these boxes that I have filled in. So I'm gonna click on save and close. And I have now created a template for the one to four family residential contract. And you can see it is here, the most recent one that I've created. And so at this point, I've had a couple of test ones. So now I have three. I'm going to go in and actually delete the other ones just so that I don't get confused later on. You can see if you click on the drop down, you have the ability to copy it. Maybe you have a document that's the same, regardless of whether it's a buy side or a listing side, but the data might be different. So you can make a copy for a buyer version and a seller version 
um, but I'm going to delete this other one here as well. Now, if I needed to go in and make changes to either the template name or the content, I can just click on edit. That's going to bring the document back open. And then again, I can change the name by clicking on this pencil at the top, or I can change or fill in any of the information by just going through the form itself. Okay. So we're going to save and close that one more time. Now we have that template established. That is now a form template available in our form templates library, personal library, right? You can see here. So now let's go back to the room. And this is the room that we just created, Old Test Testerson. So we're gonna open that room. We're gonna go into documents and we're going to bring in the family one to four. Now, many of you probably have form groups set up by your market center, whatever it may be. I'm just gonna bring in just this one form to show you this example. Um, but obviously, you know, you could bring in multiple documents. Now I've got that form added to my room. I don't wanna have to click on it and fill it all out again because I have a template for it. So I can now right click and click on apply form template. Let me show you, I'm gonna click on this. And the only information that should have been brought over should have been my uh, buyer's information inside of my opportunity. I don't even remember if I, yeah. So here's my buyer's information. But if we scroll down to page nine, you'll see now this was a listing opportunity. So it actually brought in some of my information from the listing opportunity. Um, so maybe not the best example here. Um, maybe shouldn't have done it as a listing opportunity. And yet we're gonna keep rolling. So I'm gonna save and close. You saw the buyer side was completely empty. Well, my template is a buyer based template. So I'm going to right click and then apply the form template. So if I click on a apply form template, it's going to say, which one of your templates do you want to apply and data on the template will override any existing data on the form. So I'm going to choose that, click on apply. And now when I click on this document, any of the data that I put inside of my form will now show up on that specific document. It's also going to pull any of the information from my opportunity, right? So that's why it's pulling in the contact name for the client. But here you go, disregard the right-hand side. Here's the left-hand side, all of the information that I brought in, right? That was my form. Let's do it one more time. I'm gonna save and close. I'm gonna do now a listing agreement. So let's pretend that I'm actually the listing agent. We're gonna to go to My Docs. We're gonna create a template, right? So we're gonna to go to Form Templates. And then we're gonna click on the Create Form Template button and we are going to find the residential listing agreement. And give me one second, the residential real estate listing agreement. Here we go. All right, so this is the agreement that we use. Oh, this is lease, whoops. Well, that's fine. Here's one for the exclusive right to lease. Okay, so I could come up and change this and let's just put template test. You can name it whatever you want. Remember, you're just choosing your template from that dropdown. Now, none of this would be static, right? Because this is all information about the actual property. But if we go back up, I, I mean, I can say, look, it's always 50% of one month's rent. That's just kind of how we do it in Texas, typically. Um, and if there's any other boxes that I do, like I'm always going to file this on the MLS. Um, it's always going to be broker. And I can come in and change these on the templates but these are nine times out of 10, what's going to happen. I'm authorized to put a key box, so on and so forth, especially in this lease agreement, right? We're gonna pay the other agent 50%. Um, so anyways, you could go through and check all the boxes and all the radio buttons that are pretty static throughout your entire agreement. Then at the very bottom, obviously we're gonna have broker's printed name. Well, that's always gonna be Keller Williams. Premier, right? The license number of my market center is always going to be the same license number. This is always going to be the broker's associate signature. This is always going to be my name. So I can put that information in and now I'm going to save and close. So here is our lease agreement. It's the exclusive right to lease template. So now if I bring this document into my room, I can apply this template. So we'll go back to the room just one more time. I just wanted to show it to you twice so you understood kind of how it works. I've got to go in and find the actual form. That was the residential exclusive right to lease under TXR. So we'll find that document. 
And actually it didn't show listing agreement right to lease. Here we go. Sorry, got that added. Now this document exists inside of the room and because I have a template, I can right click, apply form template, choose this template and boom. Now, if I go into that document and scroll down to the last page, all of those information, well, any of the information, right? I put 50% on some of those. I put uh, check some radio boxes because those are parts of the templates. You'll see that those are already filled in as well. So 50% automatically filled in because I did that. Um, listing service checkboxes automatically filled in because they're on my template. Uh, access for the key box already there. Intermediary already checked because these were all parts of my template. Now, for some reason, this client says no intermediary. I can always go in and change it, but it just helps me not have to fill in or check or you know complete any of those boxes that are static almost every single time. And then if we look at the very last page, you'll see here's my broker's information automatically brought in because I put it in the template. So um, just for clarification, there's no way to bring in multiple form templates at once. So I can still use my form groups that my brokerage has set up for me. However, I would have to right click on each one of the forms to change it from a blank form to a templated form. Um, so just kind of a heads up there. And you can make multiple templates of the same form. Just make sure that you're titling them real clear so you know which template you're going to apply to which document. Guys, that's pretty much it for today. A pretty new exciting on the DocuSign release. Sorry for a bit longer of a video, but wanted to make sure you guys really understood that. Can definitely be a time saver and just one more reason to use DocuSign over some of the other options that we have available. As always, it's a pleasure talking to you. I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Take care, guys.